Hi, I'm Michael Goldman, the Jewish chaplain at Georgetown Law School. I don't have to tell you how unprecedented these times are. And according to Dr. Fauci and other medical experts, we can't even tell when they will end. Reminds me of a movie. Do you remember the classic movie Groundhog Day? For those of you who don't or haven't seen it, here's the story. A weatherman named Phil, played by Bill Murray, is assigned by a TV station to go to Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania for an annual rite, Groundhog Day. The tradition is that the groundhog comes out of his winter hibernation, and if he stays out, it means there will be an early spring. Otherwise, there will be at least six more weeks of winter. Phil considers the assignment degrading at best. He covers the groundhog ceremony with unveiled contempt, and when it's over, Phil is ready to leave. But a surprising snowstorm blows in that evening, and Phil can't leave the next day, or the next, or the next, ad infinitum. He can't leave Punxsutawney, and he can't leave Groundhog Day either. Each day becomes Groundhog Day, a replay of the previous one. Phil is beside himself. He was It was boring and contemptible the first day. Now it's torture. Does this sound a little familiar? Have you noticed a certain repetitiveness in our lives recently? Look at the same books, computer screen, follow, following the same routines. Can't go out with your friends to a movie, to a show, concert, or ball game. Let's see how Phil handles his new normal. At first, he tries to exploit it, to take advantage of his foreknowledge of everything that will happen that day. He's pursuing a woman, of course. And in the first few days, he learns everything he knew, needs to know about her. Her favorite poem, poet, food, music, place, etc. And on the next day, he puts on his charm offensive. He says he, too, has favorites, the same favorites, as it turns out. And she is, of course, unaware that she had previously told him those favorites. But his foreknowledge and charm don't, don't really work with her. And they definitely can't can cure, cannot cure the existential problem. The day is on a continuous loop. He eventually decides just to kill himself. But that doesn't work either. After driving himself and the groundhog off a cliff, the next day dawns again. Groundhog Day redux, just like the first. Even after he thought he had died, he can't escape. But then in good Hollywood fashion, Phil figures it out. Out of desperation, he tries a radically different approach. He'll use his perfect foreknowledge for good. He knows where there will be an accident that day, and he prevents it. He learns how to play the piano in his ample spare time, and then he entertains the elderly. He also uses newfound talent to raise funds for a local charity, and on and on. He is transformed from a cynical opportunist opportunist, yes, to the town hero. And of course, he now gets the girl. And then it does become tomorrow. The loop is broken. Life resumes. He can return home with the girl if memory serves. So am I saying the pandemic is Groundhog Day? No. <laughs> this is no comedy. Pandemic is not a comedy. But the film can provide us with some guidance. On the holiest day of the Jewish year, Yom Kippur, we recite a prayer called the Natana Tokef that envisions God deciding each person's fate for the coming year. Who shall live and who shall die? 
who shall prosper and who shall be poor, who shall be humbled and who shall be exalted. The prayer concludes, however, but repentance, prayer, and good deeds avert the severity of the decree. Avert the severity of the decree. What does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean that they alter the decree. But repentance, prayer, and good deeds do help. How does this work? Imagine a young student today staying home, worrying she might have contracted or been exposed to the coronavirus. What should she do? Other than washing her hands, wearing gloves and masks, etc. Well, actually, she could call her mother, father, siblings, or grandparents. She could FaceTime them. She could think of others who are alone and afraid and provide them with virtual company. She could prepare baked goods and have them delivered to first responders or other medical staff. These actions will not change her prognosis or her fate, but they will give purpose to her days, whatever the prognosis. She will be engaged in life, not just hers, but others as well. In other words, regardless of how she tests for the virus, this young woman's meaningful life will now go on. Kind of like Phil. Once he got over being stuck in the day and realized there were also others, at least as miserable as he was, once he saw and helped them, his life could resume with meaning and purpose. I wish all our community life and health, kindness and connection, and a good fate in this trying time.